Welcome back warriors. Today we're working on five common pistol shooting errors. Stick around. What's up warriors? It's Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training. Here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you found your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. All right, warriors. So when it comes to pistol fundamentals and marksmanship, you gotta understand that you're using only two hands, that you're not using your cheek to support a longer firearm, you're not using your shoulder to support a longer firearm. When we're doing like rifle or shotgun, we use four points of contact. Your dominant hand, your support hand, your shoulder, and then your cheek weld, how you put your face up against the stock of the gun. When it comes to pistols, the sights are much closer, so it's a little bit harder to aim to begin with, and you're using your hands. If you're using two hands, um, it's still a bit more challenging than using long arms. So they say you never bring a knife to a gunfight. Well, you never bring a pistol to a rifle fight, right? So when I have especially new shooters, and I have a lot of police officer students that uh, come to me for, let's say they're, they're going to take their qualification, and they're, they go to the range, and they're like, oh man, I failed, or... Uh, it wasn't as good as I want it to be, or you know, I want to brush up before I go take my qualifications. So they come in, and a lot of times, if you don't shoot regularly, it's a perishable skill. So what happens is, there's a few areas that are probably the most common hiccups in your game, in your shooting, and uh, we're going to go over them today and, and some easy ways to rectify them. Stick around. All right, guys, so shooting error number one is... I see this most with new shooters. Um, either they don't have their magazine seated all the way, or they, when they go to rack the gun, they kind of like either let it ride forward a little bit, or they don't pull it back all the way. And both of those are going to lead to some sort of like malfunction as far as loading goes. It's not going to be seated correctly, and then they get line everything up, and it goes click, not bang. The easiest remedy for this is what's called tap rack ready so i have a whole video on that definitely check that out that covers a few other common um you know malfunctions that happen on the range that you should know how to uh you know take care of on the spot so when it comes to improper loading again if you put the magazine in and it's in but it's not like in it's not going to go bang if it's in but you again safe and empty if it's in but you baby the slide like you kind of bring it back and then you let it go forward like you kind of help it go forward as opposed to letting it go uh, that could cause a misfeed or improper loading of the of the of the round into the chamber another thing is if you don't pull it back far enough sometimes you're going to get it looks like it's it's in there but it's not in there the slide's not all the way forward like what am i doing wrong and again this happens predominantly with new shooters so as you get the idea of tap Rack, bang. All right, and the second error that I see all the time, and it's not just with new shooters, it is with a lot of new shooters, but somebody that hasn't shot in a while or doesn't shoot regularly, or, you know, I know a lot of people that need to use their gun for work, but they're not really gun people. And I think there's a little bit, a little part of them that maybe it's still a little bit scared, and, and that's okay. Um, so what happens is you got to remember that when you shoot a gun, it's like a controlled explosion, right? So it's loud and there's a, you know, there's some recoil. The gun's going to jump around. And what happens is people like jerk the trigger. That's the easiest way to describe it. So what happens is it's unloaded right now, but if I'm aiming and I'm like nervous, like uh, it's taking me too long, especially if you're doing timed exercises, like, ah, damn it. And they just kind of like <laughs> jerk the trigger. Well, what's going to happen is you're going to look at your target. You'll be like, oh my God, what happened? I was aiming for the middle. Where did it go? So jerking the trigger happens either when uh, time is introduced into a drill or when a person is like anticipating that explosion, they get nervous and they're just like, ah, damn it. And they just, they just let it rip. Whereas I do a lot of drills with dummy rounds and a dummy round basically has... You put a, a bullet in there that is not a real bullet. It's the same size, same shape, same everything, but there's no gunpowder, no explosion, no projectile. And when you pull the trigger, 
nothing happens. When I put those dummy rounds in, in between live rounds, a person will say like, oh, I'm not jerking the trigger. I said, okay. And I put a dummy round in there that they don't know about. I said, let me just load your magazine. They load the magazine and the first one goes boom, boom. And then when it goes click, instead of going click and being a steady gun, it does this because they're jerking the trigger and it either pulls toward their non-dominant side or pulls down. And of course the rounds are gonna go all over the place. So one of the things that you could do to help not jerk the trigger or help correct that, slow down, just slow down. Do some dry fire exercises, like safe and empty, no ammunition anywhere near the, the, the table. And you just go through slow, 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 till you feel the click. Slow, 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 till you feel the click. Keeping good sight picture, good sight alignment, all that good stuff. You could use dummy rounds as well. And the idea is just slow, 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 because if the, the gun starts moving around when you pull that trigger, you're definitely jerking the trigger. The more you practice dry fire, the more you'll see what it's supposed to look like and feel like when, when you are shooting. And then you start to practice the idea of like, you're always pulling that trigger as if like in your head, it's gonna go off like a surprise. Remember in the beginning, it's slow increasing pressure to bang. Oh my God, what was that? And that's how you're supposed to do it. All right, so the next error is improper grip. So a lot of times when you look at the target and the bullets are kind of, maybe they're grouping or they're, you're, I say, all right, you're aiming for the middle. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to the right. Maybe you're using too much, too much grip, too much strength in your, your dominant hand or your shooting hand. Why don't you loosen up your grip and let this thing like, be the vice grip. So sometimes it's, we look at, well, is your, are you like nice and high up under the trigger guard? Is the space between your, your thumb and your index finger nice up, high, nice and high on the back strap? When you're grabbing with your other hand, what I'm looking for is the space that your hand does not cover. You use the, the meat of your palm, like the heel of your palm to fill in that space. Both your thumbs should be pointing at the target. My other, index finger, the top knuckles, like right under the trigger guard. These fingers are digging into the back of, of my knuckles. My index finger points where I want the bullet to go. My thumbs are pointing where I want the bullet to go. My, this grip is maybe like, I don't know, 30%. And this hand is like 70%. So that way that allows this to like focus way more on the trigger pull and less on the like the death grip. So all of a sudden, if you see that you're pulling too much to the, to your non-dominant side, it's probably a lot of grip or or over finger and really what you need to do is reevaluate your grip, how you're holding the gun and some of the little things that you might be doing. There's, if you have a loose grip and you feel like they're going high, if it's going low, it's cause you're, you're like anticipating. So all, when you get quality instruction and an instructor will be able to tell you, hey, when you're shooting at the target, we see all your rounds are kind of going this direction, which means you're probably doing this thing and they'll help guide you through it. But grip and proper grip really helps not eliminate all of your, your errors, but a lot of them. It'll really help you kind of refine your focus and, and, and get your much better groups. All right, error number four. This is another one I see mostly in new shooters um, and rusty people. But if you, if you learn the fundamentals well enough and correctly enough the first time, this is a pretty basic thing. Um, stance, so check this out. I see this happen all the time. Somebody gets the gun, they stand up and they kind of like lean back. I don't know if they're scared of the gun or something. And they're kind of like trying to maybe keep it away from it. I don't know what they're doing. So I'll say, stand up straight. And they're like, there's a lot of leaning back. Um, in martial arts, you get a fighting stance. If you've ever taken even a aerobic kickboxing class or a boxing class or I don't know, any sort of, uh, any sort of martial arts, they teach you like basically a fighting stance, right? So you get your, your fighting stance and put the gun in your hand. <laughs> aim, aim like you're getting ready to fight. That's how I do it. That's how I teach it. That's how I learned it. Um, there's all different types of stances, whether you go with uh, an isosceles, which is the, like your legs, like an isosceles triangle. Um, I like to have one foot back a little bit. It's not like a, I don't have my body bladed all the way, but in law enforcement, you wear body armor and the, the, the weakest points are like the holes in the armor. So you learn to present the vest toward the threat. So I still keep my shoulder square and my chest square, but I bring my, my dominant side back. I lean forward a little bit and eyes on target. If you feel like you're 
getting like knocked around a lot when you're shooting, that's that's all your stance. So especially with long arms, you start shooting a rifle or shotgun, man, you get one of these stances, you're gonna feel like the gun is like beating you up a little bit. Where, again, I, I train people all the time and I just, I push on their, their hips and they go forward like this. I say, now bring it up. And it's the same concept. Like you get your fighting stance, hold the gun, get in the fight, get on target. And now when it, it hits you, whether it's in your shoulder or in your hand, it's gonna push you back into your stance, not push you off your balance. So if you have an issue with your stance, a good idea is, and not all rangers are gonna let you do this, but you get quality instruction or a quality instructor and they'll help you do it. Take a picture of yourself or video yourself. Again, not, not to put it on the Instagram, but to review like your form and uh, let that be your guide, all right? Definitely get the quality instruction though. Let that guy be the one or girl, the one to help you out. All right, and number five is double taps. Now, I see at the range people all the time going for like that pow, 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 pow. And that double tap, I'm not sure of the mentality behind it. I mean, if you can do it, if you know how to do it correctly, then have at it. I know there's a drill that I love to do. We, uh, in police work, we do it often. There's a name for it. It's the uh, failure to stop or the... It's basically designed for if you were shooting at somebody who had body armor on, like somebody's hurting a bunch of people or trying to shoot you and you, you're shooting them to stop the threat and you're like hitting them. You see you're hitting them and they're not going down. So it's like body, body, head, body, body, head, body, body, head. Uh, another name is Mozambique. That's it's a, it's a, if you're going to learn firearms for self-defense and home defense, imagine somebody broke into your house and they had body armor on. You're like, oh my God, they're still coming up the stairs. They're, oh my God, they're still coming down the hole. What do I do? So it's, it's a drill that you do. But if you're practicing the double tap, like either part of that drill or just because somebody told you, hey, you got to get double taps and you look at your rounds and they're very far apart, then you're doing your double tap really incorrectly. So what I tell people is, hey, why don't you shoot two rounds accurately, as slow as you have to do it. So you get your sight picture, you get your sight alignment and you fire, boom. And for some people, you need to really manage that, that have better recoil management so as you work your grip you work your stance you work how you're holding the gun all that stuff all of a sudden boom and you get it right back on target boom so maybe your double tap will be like bang bang but when you look your, your rounds are much closer together and that's a good thing little by little slow is smooth smooth is fast fast is deadly so as you get better at this exercise it'll be like bang 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 but if you just go to the range you're like bang bang and like you see one hole in the target and you don't know where the other one went well if you did that when it counts there's a uh, saying that you're you're accountable for every bullet that comes out of your gun until it stops so if you miss your target and hit something else six blocks away two towns away whatever it is that's on you so instead of being like dirty harry or john wayne john wick john rambo why don't you just like slow down do it right and, uh, and as you get better, then you'll pick up the speed. Again, there's no prize for, for fast. The prize is for accurate. So if you can't shoot accurately, quickly, well, which is more important, quickly or accurately, right? Quickly or correctly. So I'd, I'd rather do correctly, so slow down. Do your dry fire drills, check your stance, check your grip. And again, you can learn a lot from a video, but you'll learn more by, <sighs> I see a lot of people, a lot of people I know always like buying the latest and greatest stuff and they're so itchy to go spend all this money on attachments to their guns and stuff. And I'm like, whoa, have you shot the thing? Have you gone for lessons? Have you trained with it? So I'm very plain Jane, man. I, I got the gun. I put night sights on and that's how I shoot it. That's how I need it for work, for my police job. So that's just how I use it. That's how I practice with it. It's fun when you shoot some sort of like Thing with all the bells and whistles but for me that that's not my thing and I, I don't knock anybody that does or is that way well uh, if you got the money go for it i don't but um again if you're going to start spending money obviously you spend it on safety 
make sure you have a good way to keep your stuff locked up and secure so that you no know, curious eyes and minds can't get to it make sure you get some good range ammunition so that you you get you know proper eyes and ears so that you could go to the range and practice and really you should spend your money on quality instruction don't go for the cheapest guy get somebody who's, who's a good instructor who you feel comfortable with who has a good reputation who's really going to help you that that's really what it comes down to and then train and train and train some more so guys i hope this helps well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you got to have it, make sure you hit the bell notification and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.